In Creo Simulate 3.0, users now have the ability to perform a large deformation contact analysis with finite friction for both 2D and 3D models. Let's go through the process of defining a contact interface on this given assembly. Under the Refine Model tab, I can select Interface, and this opens up the Interface Definition dialog. For the interface type, let's choose Contact. As for references, we can either choose Surface to Surface or Component to Component. In our example, we'll do Surface to Surface. Once selected, now I can define the properties of the interface. You'll notice a new drop-down menu for friction. If I expand this, I'm presented with three options, None, Infinite, and Finite. None represents a frictionless contact interface, enabling components to freely slip relative to each other. Infinite represents an infinite contact interface where the two components cannot slip relative to each other. Lastly, we have the new functionality of Finite, which enables users to define a static coefficient of friction as well as a dynamic coefficient of friction between the two references. Let's go ahead and select Finite. At this point, I can now define the static coefficient of friction. In our case, I'll enter in 0.15. I can also define the dynamic coefficient of friction, however I'll choose to keep it same as the static. Now that we've applied the contact interface with finite friction, we'll be able to determine if sliding has occurred during the contact analysis. More importantly, we'll be able to determine how much sliding has occurred at each interface, and utilizing the new measure for tangential force, we'll be able to determine the tangential force load transferred for each of these interfaces. I've also created a user-defined measure called Reaction Y. This represents the overall force required to push and snap this component into place. At this point, let's click on Home and start the analysis process. Let's click File and New Static Analysis. To start with, let's give it a defined name. You'll notice that the nonlinear checkbox is selected, as well as the options of Calculate with Large Deformation and Contacts. Again, because we represented interfaces with contacts in our model, this is automatically selected. At the bottom in the Convergence tab, we also notice that there is a new option called Press Fit. We will select this for our Define Analysis. Under Outputs, I'd like to define the user-defined output steps with a quantity of 11 equally spaced. With this selected, I could say OK. Let's go run the analysis. We can select the Study Status Report and review the report as it's processing the analysis. Once completed, we can scroll up in the report to see when the slippage first occurred in this case after step 7. Let's go ahead and review the results. On the screen we see three result windows. On the left shows a graph for reaction Y, that user-defined measure that I created that would depict the force required to snap the component into place. On the far right I could see the actual tangential force across interface 2. Lastly, in the middle, we have an animation of the overall stress applied to the assembly as the components are snapping into place. This enhancement has been one heavily requested by Creo Simulate users. Now users will be able to determine how much sliding occurs at each interface and the specific interface tangential force load being transferred.